bionic bird decoys. Quite like an helicopter. Is this the future of pigeon shooting? We're on Fallen Wheat with Andy and Gary. Okay, go. <laughs> no flies on me. I'm walking up blue bottles with a salt shotgun. Browning is out and about holding its experience days. We're at the first one. We remind you how to win a £6,000 Merkel at the game fair and get a free cup of coffee. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. of the harvest in this part of the southeast of England and the crops are high. It's a time when crop protection, although not illegal, is sometimes frowned upon because of the difficulty retrieving the shot birds. As the aerials show, large patches of Andy's wheat have fallen foul of recent strong winds. It means that whatever Andy and his cousin Gary shoot on this baking hot day, their labs... Good girl, Rosa will have a good chance of picking it. We had some really, really strong winds uh, last Tuesday. Strong winds and rain. And uh, it's just any wheat bits that have had a little bit extra fertiliser or where there's holes in, like there's a hole in the hedge here, the wind just comes straight up top here. It's just made it flat right the way out across. Some nice flat bits down through the middle. Well, not nice, but... <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, so built up on here a bit. I sat and watched them yesterday. There was only probably 300, two, 300. And they've moved out onto the, the rape, which is just behind, right behind this hedge. Coming on the right, Moosh. With opportunities to partner up with plus one, few and far between, it's now or never. <laughs> you sound quite excited today. You're, you're talking quite fast. I'm excited. It's, 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 not, it's, it's good to get Gary out. He's, 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 how he's been is how I'm going to be in. Probably miserable. next week. No, I'm not miserable, David. No, Gary. Oh, Gary. Miserable. Gary's not always miserable. He's always stressed. Oh, is he? Yeah, stressed. No, he's, it's, it's good to get him out. It, um, it's been really slow this year, and the pigeon-wise, but no, it's good to get him out. <laughs> it's good to have him so out. So you tag team me today? Yeah. Oh, jeez, I couldn't get on that. I've got quite a high high here. I'm a bit. I'm gonna. I'm worried. I'm gonna struggle. I'll drop it down for you. Say when. Yours. Shot. Say when. Shot. Look at that. Right on the track. Synchronised pigeon shooting at its best. Now recently we've been meandering down memory lane with Andy. For this outing we're going futuristic, introducing the bionic bird that David has named Brian. <laughs> right. Hello Brian. This is Brian the bionic bird. <laughs> so, what do you reckon? So we've been talking retro clothes. Yeah. What do you reckon about the idea? At some point in the future, you could actually have like bionic birds floating round. Have an idea. Yeah, Brian. Oh. Should we set him free? Sure, set. I've got to try and film it <laughs> before I shoot it. Yeah, but it's going to end up in the crop, is it? Can you keep an eye on it? Hold on, hold on. Let me get the, let me get some level up. Let me get some revs up. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah, he went well. <laughs> you got him, Gary. Where oh, is he? I think he's been hit in the head. Hold on, hold on. Chuck, chuck it. Go. Right up. <laughs> Hey, oh, yeah. Where's he gone? You ain't never going to find that, Mush. Okay. Quiet, an helicopter. Oh, no! Is it bringing him in? His tail's up in the air. What's up with his tail? That's for beginners, because I've only just started. Oh, oh, no, no! This way! This way! 
This way. This way. Do you reckon it's got legs, wings? Oof. Future. Wouldn't be no good for me. Huh? Wouldn't be no good for me. I'd yeah, never, you'd, I'd you'd never be able to fly that. I'm just thinking, you press the button, up it goes, it just stays in a bit of a pattern. We could choose the patterns, maybe. If you could choose a pattern, it just goes round and comes down and goes round and comes yeah, down. Keeps doing thinking. that all day. I'm thinking that as a potential startup. <laughs> you did tell me the price. Yeah. I nearly pooed a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> behind, behind, mush, behind. So the sweetest things. You might have to use your imagination on this one as we didn't have a spare teenager to operate, Brian. Maybe join us for Field Sports Britain episode 1251 to see a 16 year old Regan <laughs> using a flock of Brian's. Is that cool? Back to the shooting, and there are lots. Andy has a £10 bet with his cousin over the potential bag number. Gary's gone large and reckons more than 200. Crow is not so sure, especially as the birds are heading directly to where they should have set up the hide. But there is no fallen wheat there. But this wheat's a way off though, is it? This wheat has really moved on in the last week, 10 days. Well, since last weekend, we've had a bit of hot weather. The old warm weather really is pushing it on. Um, it's surprising how quick it's coming on now. The rape, we sprayed that off 10 days ago. So we've got the game fair coming up next weekend. Um, I'm up there one day, so I'm gonna probably try and get that cut Wednesday before the, before the game fair. That's the plan anyway, so. You that's, need a job though for today, don't you? You certainly do. Oh. So you should just come back with another one. Good girl. The place we wanted to be was further down. Ideally, we would have shot more. And um, that's the reason for putting a few more birds out, try and oof, pull them right into us. But the flight lines, come, they either come through this gap or just up there to the right, or they cut through there to go down to the other end of the field. But it's just a case of picking them, that's what it's all about today. I hate, hate wasting them, hate dropping them that I can't pick, so the, the, the aim is today to, as you've seen, everything we've shot's either been on this or just on the edge of the track, so it's, it's worked really well. So well, now we've got a few more out, they should, should draw in a bit better and we can build a bag then. Even though we've been talking modern, Gary's brought a family heirloom. The 20 bore pump action their grandfather let them shoot. Crow gives the Blazer F-16 a rest and takes it for a spin. I remember a couple of shows ago we was talking about the gun I used to use when I was a kid. Oh. There, there we go. It's the old savage pump. Let's see how we get on with this bad boy. So that's something that Gary used to, yeah? Yeah. Well, it sounds the business. Uh, I mean, uh, when was it last shot? When did you last shoot this, Moose? When did you last shoot this? Three, four years ago, I last put that. Three, four years ago. I, I want a real easy one. Ah, oh, yep. Aye. Aye. <laughs> so how old were you when you first shot that? Probably 10. No, really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I was so light. Oh my goodness. I think I might put it back in its case now. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. Oof. I have to edit that bit out. 12 ball, 20 ball, what would you say was the sort of practical difference between the two? Uh, the 20 board is less less recoil, um, it's a lighter gun and that's a nice little gun anyway um, but that's got skeet choke which is a big pattern a lot of holes in it so I'm shooting three quarter and quarter out of this I'm shooting quarter over the decoys and three quarter for the longer ones and it's been working really well but like I say, I've just been wobbling them down. It just gives the dogs a bit more work to do, and I don't really want it today. It's a bit hot. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just change back to this. Uh, so that they're dead, dead. Oi. Like that.
this time last year, the harvest was a few weeks ahead and we were filming on the rape stubble. We spoke about the lack of demand for pigeons thanks to the pandemic. Surely 12 months on, that's now changed as restrictions ease. Can you give me an idea of whether there's demand? Is it, is it still flat? Flat as a pancake. Really? Yeah. There's no demand for pigeons, there's no demand for venison, there's no demand for anything. That's a worry. Yeah, it is. Do the deer numbers are higher? Yeah, there haven't been so many deer shot because a lot of people I know, they haven't, haven't shot them for the simple reason they can't get rid of them. There's only so much you can eat. Um, I eat a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> you may laugh, David, but I have it nearly... Well, I've had it... I had gammon last night, but every other night this week I've had venison. So whether it be burgers, sausages... How many cocks, do you reckon you go, can you count the number of cocks you eat in a year? <sighs> I never used to eat that much. But I had a bit of a dodgy stomach and... So a venison burger a day keeps the doctor away, is that what you're saying? Well, I, I eat a lot of them. All venison, it's just... I love it, absolutely love it. That was a shot, Moosh! <laughs> Andy and Gary eventually pack up at 7pm, having picked just shy of 280 birds, with Andy a tenner light. Nice breeze, actually. Thank you, Andy and Gary. And for more crow, click on the link for a chat through some of the Jack Pike shooting accessories. Now, are you coming to the game fair at Ragley Hall, Warwickshire this weekend? Come and see me pounding the stage at the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre from 10 o'clock. Come before 10 o'clock and members of the Field Sports Nation can pick up a free cup of coffee from the Field Sports Channel gang at the theatre. That's also available if you want to sign up to join. Plus, you get your free goodie box while you're there. Plus, you enter a draw to win this knife. It's the new Field Sporter design made by Dean Smallwood of ADG Custom Knives, who will be there too, as will on different days Andy, Paul and... This bloke may also make an appearance. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The British team has landed in Tokyo for the Olympics. The five strong team consists of our own Aaron Heading from Lincolnshire, fellow Olympic trap shooters Matt Coward-Holly from Essex and Kirsty Hegarty from Edinburgh. First up is rifle shooter Sinead McIntosh from Northern Ireland, who is in action on Saturday the 24th of July 2021. Next on Monday should have been our top medal hope and youngest member of the team, Amber Hill from Berkshire, competing in the skeet, but Amber pulled out due to a positive Covid test. Here's what our 2012 double trap Olympic gold medalist has to say about the team's chances. Matt Cowd, Holly, Aaron, Matt coming in with bags of confidence. Aaron, well, he's, you know, he's anybody's guess at this particular point. I, I, I have a funny feeling Aaron will be in that final. For coverage when and what to watch, go to fieldsportschannel.tv forward slash Olympics. There's a link in the description below. The Labour Party is reviewing its England rural policy. Newish leader Keir Starmer said in February, no party can claim to represent the country if it doesn't represent the countryside. The party says it wants a new relationship with British farming and rural communities. Shadow DEFRA Minister Daniel Zeichner joins Charlie on stage at the Game Fair Theatre on Saturday the 24th of July at 3pm to talk about the Rural England Policy Review, which started in April and ends on the 31st of July so there's still time to fill it in if you haven't. There's a link in the description below. Basque says it welcomes a new land use report about climate change, but it complains about one claim that Muirburn destroys peat and should be banned. To prove it doesn't, Basque's Gareth Doherty puts his mobile phone underneath Heather during a controlled burn, recording it all on the device. The burning has no effect on the phone, nor the peat beneath it. Basque repeated the fact that controlled burning in the uplands is essential to reduce wildfires and maintain a healthy habitat for many species, including threatened ground nesting birds. A ban would be a knee jerk response to pressure from ill informed environmentalists and animal rights groups. Six nests at a osprey site in the Lake District have successfully fledged chicks. 
South Lake site produced 15 chicks. Mike Thornley of Basque, which helped fund the project, called it a complete success, adding that several immature ospreys were in the area searching for future partners. The chicks are soon expected to embark on their epic migration to West Africa. Basque credits 13-year-old male YC with hatching 15 chicks over the past eight years, saying he's a pillar of the project. Berwick residents are concerned the remains of their loved ones could be desecrated by badgers. Northumberland authorities have known about the badgers moving into the graveyard for more than a year, but have done nothing about it. Some angry families have threatened to take matters into their own hands, according to the Chronicle newspaper. They're worried the badgers will eventually unearth bones of those buried at Tweedmouth Cemetery and are frustrated by legal restrictions on tackling the pesky animals. They say they're worried someone might use traps or poison to get rid of them. The Disabled Shooters Group is celebrating its 25th anniversary with a shoot open to everyone. The event is at Kibworth Shooting Ground on Friday the 17th of September 2021. On the day there will be competitions in various categories as well as raffles and a prize pot. Details in the description below. Simon Cowell's animal charity is looking for land to release fox cubs. The celebrity is appealing for landowners who can spare enough space for a pen for a few weeks while the cubs grow big enough to release, but without the ability, of course, to hunt and therefore survive. He says his charity Wildlife Aid Foundation will pay for their food. Simon says rural locations are much preferred and they must be away from dog walkers. The WAF is supported by celebrities, including comedian Ricky Gervais. WAF has also been campaigning against laws banning the release of grey squirrels, like this one spotted munching on a bird outside a hospital in rugby. Thanks to Jeff Smith for the video link. Sainsbury's has recalled a vegan lasagna because it contains pork, beef and milk. The supermarket chain says the shoppers who bought it can get a refund. It called the recall an allergy alert and blamed it on a packaging error. The lasagna ready meal was made from the company's bolognese melt. Thanks to Steve Kearney for that tip. Vegans have destroyed a vegetable farm in Italy after learning that birds and animals are shot to protect crops. An agricultural cooperative in Bologna says vandals did 5,000 euros worth of damage. It said they pulled up potatoes, beans, aubergines, melons, as well as smashing greenhouses and an irrigation system. Safari Club International has taken aim at Facebook for its inconsistent wildlife policies. SCI accuses Facebook of allowing the unregulated and illegal trade of wildlife on its pages, with the website claiming its users are protected by US free speech laws. At the same time, SCI points out hunters are censored by Facebook for posting about their legal hunting and conservation. The organisation has a petition running that it encourages hunters to sign. It's in the links below. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. Legal gun owners in a city in California will have to fund the victims of gun crime. Mayor Sam Licardo claims that San Jose residents paid $442 million in gun violence related costs between 2013 and 2019, and he believes legal gun owners should pay for that. The city council unanimously passed measures that will require all gun owners to buy insurance and to pay an annual fee to cover Thank costs related here. to gun violence. If not, they risk having their guns taken away. Final approval of the bill will be decided in autumn. Earlier this month, the city passed a rule requiring all transactions at gun shops to be videoed. And finally, for governments all over the world that are worried about replica guns looking like real guns, there's another worry. Real guns looking like toys. Based on the Glock 19, the Block 19 is a pistol encased in Lego bricks and is the brainchild of US gunmaker Culper Precision. Governments can breathe a sigh of relief this time. Culper pulled the product after an outraged Lego sent it a cease and desist order. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.
Now, if you can manage to extract yourself from the lively chat and debate of the Game Fair Theatre, you should head over to the Viking Arms stand, H600 and H602, where there's a chance to win a Merkel K5 Arabesque, one of the first in the UK. Plus, check out all the other Merkels, including the K3 and Helix models, which we featured on Field Tester. The Arabesque is worth £6,300, and all you need to do is look out for Dear Bob to guide you in. Next, from sublime world-class engraving to ridiculous high-end plastic, I'm shooting flies with a salt shotgun. You establish your flight lines. You put out your decoys. You build your hide, you get ready, and you let fly. Actually, that's more of a demonstration. This is uh, more of a walked up sport than a decoying day. Uh, I'm using uh, the Bug Assault Fly Shotgun, the choice of the fly shooting professional. Uh, it loads with this hopper here. Salt is your, is your ammunition. You prime it with air, you flick the safety catch there, and you fire. And the results are obvious and devastating. There are, of course, some species that are not on the quarry list. Now, this is not a toy, as the packaging makes clear. And as I can make clear, as you watch me hunting the mighty clothes moth in my bedroom. So why am I talking about these today? Well, this is my own one. I bought it. It's uh, got the camo pattern, so I blend invisibly into the hedge behind me. But the real reason is because Bug Assault have very kindly given us two of their new Orange Crush Bug Assault shotguns. Eat your heart out, Browning, but you won't do a B725 in Orange Crush. Mm, no, thought not. And this comes not only with the shotgun itself in stylish colours, a new push safety catch, but also a laser sight. It's £49 from all good retailers, and all it remains for me to do now is send in the retrievers. Useless animal. I love these alternative field sports. Now, Browning is on a UK tour. Last Saturday, we caught up with them at Bywell in the northeast of England. Lockdown is lifted and Browning is back with the UK tour showcasing its guns, including the new MK11. First stop, Northumberland. We're here at Bywell, and as you can see, it's a fantastic day to have our first tour date. We've got the Browning mini village with us, so we've got a, a good selection of guns here. We've got sporting guns, game guns, semi-automatics, rifles. We've got about 75 to 80 guns here that you can look and try. We've got Browning, Miracu and Winchester products here. I'm down here just to have a look at the Browning range. Uh, we're a Browning shooter at the moment. It's great to meet Sam, and uh, Bywell always put a lot of effort into into the events, so it's, it's really nice to see it. And um, it's well attended as well, which is nice to see. The, the weather's beautiful, it's a lovely day to be out. Uh, really enjoyed the day. Uh, I, I live in Durham, but happened to be on holiday up in Northumberland, very close by, so it was a perfect opportunity to have a look and see the products. Very, very impressed. Try out a new Browning or two, see what's going on. Are you a Browning owner? Or? Uh, I am, yeah. I've got a little 325 that we've had for a few years, and that's uh, it's now time for my son to uh, to have that one and so I'm looking for uh, potentially replacing it with another one or getting it, replacing my old gun with another one. So if you're thinking about buying a Browning or just want to come and test drive one, I'd highly recommend coming to the one of the tour dates. We've got another one on Wednesday this week at Austin Shooting Ground, the following Saturday at Mendip Shooting Ground and then the following Thursday at Barbary Shooting Grounds. And uh, if you're one of the VIP tickets, which I think have all gone now to be honest, uh, you get some food and drink as well. But um, please come along, we, hope, we look forward to seeing you soon. You can register online at browningtour.eu. Still time to sign up for the last two of Browning's four roadshows. Now, one more quick plug for the Game Fair. Do you have, or are you, a kid who wants a career in the countryside? Come to the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre on Sunday morning from 10 o'clock to 11.30 a.m. and talk to a range of people about possible jobs, including land management, ecology, gamekeeping, 
gun making and I will be there to advise on jobs in countryside media. That's 10 o'clock to 11.30 on Sunday morning at the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre. Next, from jobs to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The Shot with Mick Miller channel talks through a day's pigeon decoying on laid wheat. It's useful commentary with Mick, Jack and James on a cereal crop that has been flattened by rain. Pro fire wild fowling as crow shooting in Northern Ireland, also interesting for the noise of the shot because he's using a Mossberg Hush Power 20 bore. In the north of England, Corvid Hunter is mainly air gunning jackdaws, magpies and other Corvids. It's a productive morning on the farmyard. A spot of row stalking next, Mark Raglis of the Wilt Jaeger channel is in my part of the world, Somerset in the UK. There are a row all around him and his mission is to select and shoot a buck. Boar hunting is the best job in the world, say the guys from Hogs Dog Squads in Australia, who put out this sizzle reel with a lot of dog work in it. There's something about the 700 Nitro Express, the impracticality, the recoil. The man from the Kentucky Ballistics channel who brought us My 50 Cal Exploded is now thoroughly the flag bearer for massive caliber rifles. Kendall Gray, he of the God-fearing Gray Gang, is for 24 hours only eating what he catches and or kills including catfish and frogs it is he says a lot harder than kfc and finally ever thought you could catch a fish with your hands british tv presenter jeremy wade of river monsters goes noodling in the usa feeling around for catfish that's it for this week i have put all these films into a playlist for you click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description if you have a youtube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so, already whiz over to our website where you can sign up for the Field Sports Nation and you can watch Field Sports Extra, the show that goes to them exclusively on Tuesday, where you will learn how to win one of these, a £500 Aimpoint Acro C2 gun sight. So, yeah, you can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>